I'm Patrick Horrigan. I'm head of the Amnesty International office here in Northern Ireland. I think uh, generally a very, very beneficial one. I mean, Northern Ireland, really since its inception, has largely been this sort of monocultural or geocultural uh, society, almost all white, almost all Christian, even though there are different denominations in there. And in some respects, it's been almost a bit boring, uh, despite the, the, the sectarian tensions. Um, and I think that the... Uh, there's still a small but growing number of uh, people from diverse communities overseas, including the religious diversity, but other aspects of cultural diversity have really enriched this place, made it more interesting culturally, uh, in terms of cuisine, in terms of the arts, in terms of just being able to meet people with different backgrounds and outlooks on life and, and religious perspectives. And so I think it's made Northern Ireland a better place. I don't think that's always been appreciated by everybody here. Uh, we know there is a, a discrimination problem, a racism problem directed at minorities. Uh, but I think that generally it has been hugely beneficial to Northern Ireland and I would really welcome a lot more of it. I think minority groups in any society uh, can suffer discrimination. It can be silent discrimination uh, that is very hard to detect, or it can be uh, manifested in, in sort of very visible ways through verbal abuse or other forms of, of persecution. It's regularly reported how there are attacks on the, on the homes and property and sometimes the person of ethnic minorities in Northern Ireland. There's a big crossover between religious minorities and ethnic minorities in a place like this and sometimes it's hard to uh, separate out uh, the, I suppose, the abuse and the discrimination, the persecution that people face. Is it because of their skin colour? Is it because of their uh, religious beliefs? It probably is a mixture of all of the above, um, but I think that there definitely is a problem here. Amnesty International uh, exists to make the Universal Declaration of Human Rights a reality for everybody's lives in every part of the world. And we, uh, we take research, or we do research, and we take action to make those rights a reality through uh, campaigning, through speaking out, through challenging human rights violations, including discrimination and including the suppression of religious minorities and the right to freedom of expression of your religious beliefs. Amnesty's job is to shine a spotlight where people are suffering human rights violations. Those violations include when people are suffering because of their religious viewpoints. We see that all over the world. Essentially, it's normally where a religious minority in a country is persecuted by a religious majority, and that uh, goes in, in all sorts of directions, where Christians are a minority, for instance, in Syria and Iraq at the moment, they are suffering persecution and death at the hands of militias and indeed governments, uh, but equally in other parts of the world, we see Christian majorities attacking uh, other uh, religious minorities, including people of Islamic faith, and I'm, I'm sad to say this sort of cuts in every direction. It's, uh, there's no religious minority with a monopoly on persecution, and there's no religious majority with a monopoly on carrying out that persecution. So Amnesty highlights when those abuses are taking place, and we then campaign to bring those abuses to an end by putting pressure on governments to end the discrimination, to end the persecution, and to end the attacks on individuals. In Northern Ireland, it generally, it manifests itself in terms of our campaigning work against racism and against racist attacks. We're about to bring out a report actually just next week uh, on racism right across the UK and other forms of hate crime that can be based on people's uh, religious beliefs, on their uh, ethnic origins. It can be based on the fact that they're relig or they're because of their sexual orientation. In Northern Ireland, we do have a racism problem and part of that is about religious beliefs and so we stand up and challenge that and we put pressure on the government including our own government in Northern Ireland to introduce better laws to stand up against racism and then to uphold those laws and hold accountable anybody responsible for crimes against religious or ethnic minorities. Well, there is a right to uh, hold and manifest your religious beliefs, to practice your religion uh, without discrimination by the state. And in all sorts of places, we see those rights infringed. So, for instance, across a, a number of countries in Europe recently, we have seen the rights of, uh, of Muslim women to wear the burqa or the niqab. We have seen those rights infringed, where those women are being told what they can and cannot wear. And we think that's an infringement of those beliefs. In other countries, in other situations, it manifests itself in other ways. But equally, in some places, uh, we have seen where religion is privileged itself against people uh, of non-religion or against a minority religion or against some other minority community. In Northern Ireland, just as recently as I think two years ago, 
there was an attempt by the, the largest political party in Northern Ireland to introduce a new law or to change the existing law to allow people with strongly held religious beliefs to uh, discriminate against gay people. And that is, I suppose, an example where uh, religious discrimination is flipped on its head and it was uh, people with strongly held religious beliefs effectively going to be allowed to discriminate against people that they didn't like or that they thought were inconsistent with those religious beliefs and that they were allowed, for instance, if they were shopkeepers or ran a, b a bed and breakfast, to deny goods and services to a gay couple who, who would walk through their door. So I think, I think we see uh, human rights and religion uh, cross uh, crossover in both directions, uh, whatever the nature of the discrimination or the persecution, Amnesty stands up against that. We just celebrate diversity um, and and find out about other people's beliefs, other people's backgrounds, other people's worldviews, and their family and community experiences, because it makes the world on this little place in Northern Ireland a much much more interesting place. And then, rather than trying to suppress or eliminate that diversity, enjoy it, find out about it, celebrate it, join in with other people's celebrations, and stand up for your own beliefs as well. But make sure that you're not trampling on other people's beliefs in doing so. Of course, I think you can't be a human rights activist and not be an optimist. We see dreadful things sadly happening every day in different parts of the world. But the world, despite it all, I think is getting better and there's a greater and greater understanding of the principles of human rights, the fact that of uh, non-discrimination against people and we should celebrate equality. In Northern Ireland, for instance, we've seen huge progress uh, towards people from the LGBT community and the fact that there's this huge overwhelming majority of people right across the traditional religious and political divides in Northern Ireland now backing a change in the law to allow for equal marriage for same-sex couples in Northern Ireland is hugely encouraging and despite the obstacles put in our way by some politicians, I think that march towards celebration of diversity and equality is frankly unstoppable.